Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, will the 737 MAX ever get back from its production stop? Should it ever get back? And is it actually unstable? I know that you think you know the answer to this, but I'm betting you haven't thought of this, so stay tuned. Point three one zero one six. This video is brought to you in cooperation with my Patreon crew, the people who are around me, supporting me both financially, but also by previewing my videos and by checking my thumbnails and making sure that I don't send anything bad out to you guys. Now, if you want to take part in my Patreon crew, there's a link down here or up here. And if you join at a $10 per month level, then I will give you a full premium membership in the Mentor Aviation app as well. So check it out. Right guys, so throughout this week, there's been a lot of reports around the 737 MAX. It just feels like it never ever ends. And of course, on Monday, I sent out a video where I predicted that the Boeing executives would stop the production line of the 737 MAX, which was later confirmed the same day. Um, So what will happen now? Will the 737 MAX ever return to service? Will they start up the line after they had closed it down? In order for you to understand this, there's a few things that I want to make absolutely clear. One, I am not paid by Boeing, nor am I paid by Airbus or anyone else. I am telling you what I know and what I have researched with my, first of all, my experience of flying the 737 for 17 years and all of my contacts in the industry. So I want you to think of that first. The second of, you need to understand something regarding the 737 MAX. Now, I've been following all of the the, um, uh, comments inside of the Mentor Aviation app and here in the the comments to my videos and pretty much everyone who's commenting is either saying, you know, a sad face or it's about time. It was an unstable aircraft. It was a, you know, a Frankenstein aircraft that was put together and it shouldn't really have been flying anyway because an aircraft that can't fly without the MCAS should not be allowed to fly in the first place. Right. So that's that's the kind of feedback that I'm getting. And that makes me believe that people haven't really understand what MCAS and the 737 MAX actually is and where the problem actually lies. So let's have a look at it from the beginning. The MAX was created in direct competition with the new Airbus 320neo family. Okay. Airbus had come up with an aircraft that was very, very efficient, that could bring a lot more passengers for a lot less fuel a lot longer. Okay. And Boeing really, really felt that they needed to be able to compete with this. Now, there are several ways that you can make an aircraft, an existing aircraft, more efficient. You can change materials in the wings to make the, uh, the aircraft lighter. You can put new types of winglets on it to make it aerodynamically more efficient. Even new wings, which is what they did with the 737NG when that came. But you can only get so far with these things. In essence, what you really need is really efficient engines. If you have very, very efficient engines, well then you will be able to save a lot of fuel, which effectively is what the airlines were asking for. Now the 737 had a problem. Okay, the 737 was a workhorse. It was built in the 1960s. And as I explained in my video about why the NG has flat engines, right? You can check it out up here. The 737 already, when it was using the CFM 56 engines, had a problem with the engines being too large. Now, Boeing wanted to attach the even larger Leap 1B engines onto the 737. It just wasn't possible, right? They would have to extend the landing gear a lot, which would meant a complete redesign of the aircraft as such. So the only thing that they could really do was to take those larger engines and move the place of them. So move it forward and upwards. That way they could fit them. But the problem is when you start to move stuff around on an aircraft, you will 
also change the characteristics of how that aircraft feels. So in the case of the MAX, what they noticed, the, uh, the test pilots, when they were flying, is that as the aircraft reached a high angle of attack, as in when the speed came down and the angle of attack came up, well then the flight characteristic changed. Effectively, the, the larger engines with the larger nacelles, that's the engine kind of what holds the engine, started creating lift at those higher angle of attacks. And that created an upwards movement, okay? And that, together with the fact that as you add thrust, if you're in a stalling situation, for example, that will also cause more upward uh, movement, that made the aircraft feel differently. Now, note that I'm not saying that it couldn't fly. I'm saying it feel differently, okay? So, MCAS stands for the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. Note, augmentation because this is really, really important for you in order to understand this. The 737 MAX could fly beautifully without MCAS. Even at high angles of attack, a pilot who's trained on the MAX would easily be able to get out of the high um, nose attitude, the high angle of attack, get the nose down and continue to fly. That is not the issue. The problem was that at that high angle, angle of attack, if you would put me into the MAX, I wouldn't recognize it. Right? It wouldn't handle like the NG did. And this is a problem. Specifically, this is a problem for the authorities that is going to let this aircraft be part of the same type rating as the previous models. So if I, who is type rated on the 737-300 to the 900, if I was going to be able to fly the MAX without doing any simulator training, well then the MAX needs to feel like the NG in all situations. Now here is where MCAS comes in. So FAA said, no, you're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to have it in the same type rating unless you fix it. Boeing said, okay, we have the system, the MCAS system that we have previously used on the uh, KC tankers. The 767 tanker version had the MCAS as well. If we put that in, that will just trim forward a little bit the, without the pilots know, knowing it. It would trim forward a little bit in this specific situation. And by doing so, it will effectively feel the same way as the NG did. You follow me? As in, you know, the, the fact that the, the nacelles are creating lift, if it just trims forward a little bit as this is happening, the pilots won't feel it. It will feel exactly like an NG, so it should be okay. And here is what MCAS was installed for. Once again, the MAX is not an unstable aircraft. It is not something that would just fall out of the sky unless MCAS was there. It was there to create the feeling of flying an NG, okay? Now, initially when this was introduced, it was supposed to only trim a little bit and only once. It wasn't supposed to be able to reset itself and it wasn't be able to have such a large trimming momentum as it ended up happening. And now we're getting into where the problems came in, the reason why this, the, the MAX is grounded. It is not because it is an unstable platform. The MAX is grounded because the MCAS system ten, became something much, much more powerful than it was anticipated to be. It started if, you, if it started to be activated, it could trim more, as in it could force the nose down more, and any time that the pilots reset it, it would start again. That was not the intention in the beginning. So somewhere in the, the work of, of making the MCAS and making the 737 MAX, someone decided it was a good idea to only correct it to one out of the two alpha veins. We don't know how that happened. And also they decided that because they thought that this was such a low um, safety system that it was that it wouldn't really have any safety implications well then you know we, they don't really need to tell the pilots either this is going to be a system that is just going to work in the background on the very very specific circumstances okay so this together all of the different kind of communications between the FAA and Boeing and how this was sorted we don't really understand that fully yet but this is what happened so MCAS went from being this obscure little system that wouldn't really ever be activated into what we know it is today. All right. So here comes the recertification process in. This is why Boeing thought that it was going to be 
a quick fix because they realized when you know the data started coming in from from the different horrible crashes that okay so if we connect this to the two alpha veins we put an angle of attack indicator in the cockpit we stop it from moving more than once and we limit the amount that it can move well then it should be sorted shouldn't it but now of course the FAA had taken this up and the FAA had realized that they had given a little bit too much authority to Boeing on this case. So now they have gone in and they are rechecking everything, including the classification of the problem in itself. So it went from a problem that has a low safety classification into a problem that has a high safety classification. And when that happens, the amount of checks and the amount of redundancies and the amount of different situations that needs to be simulated increases a lot. Hence, the much longer certification process, right? So Boeing came out on Monday, said that they were going to stop the line. Now, this, is, uh, this was, as I predicted, a fairly predictable move because they have um, close to well, 500 aircraft that is standing out on different parking lots. Just the cost of building these aircraft uh, without getting anything paid is enormous. And they essentially had to stop it. So, should Boeing actually start up the 737 MAX line again then? Well, according to me, yes, of course they should. Once the FAA are done with their checks and all of the other authorities have signed off it, it's going to be a perfectly safe aircraft to fly. But the question at the end is always going to be, will you be happy to fly it? Will the passengers have confidence in the aircraft? Because if the MAX comes back on the line and it turns out that the airlines will not be able to fill up their aircraft because no one wants to fly it, well then obviously it will not work. However, I am fairly confident that that won't happen. The reason I don't think so is because the majority of people out there who's going to be flying the MAX will never ever know that they're flying on a MAX aircraft and none will they really care. You guys who are following channels like mine or following the aviation industry, maybe you're a nervous flyer out there, you might know and you might have hesitations about it even though you shouldn't really, but you are a huge minority in this case. The big majority of people, they don't really care. They wouldn't be able to tell a 747 from a Concorde if they tried to. So that's the key. I think that if the 737 MAX comes back and it flies without any incidents that can be attributed back to the aircraft itself, then it will just fade into you know, distant memory. And a year from now, the 737 MAX will be flying fully for the airlines again. It will be as efficient as Boeing has promised it to be. And, uh, and the passengers will happily fly with it. At least that's my prediction. And we'll see in a year if I'm right or wrong. I want to take this opportunity to send a huge thank you to my Patreon crew out there. You guys know who you are. I am really grateful for all of the support that you have been given the channel during the past few years. It's helped me to grow as I have, to create new materials, to do more fun things. And also the crucial feedback that you guys are giving me regarding thumbnails, regarding the content of the videos is really, really appreciated. So huge thank you to you. I want to send a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to my Patreon crew and to all of you who have been watching the channel during the year. I hope that you have enjoyed it so far. Let me know what kind of new content that you guys would like to see during 2020 and um, I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Absolutely fantastic. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.